You, finding life rather dull, dreaming again of exotic places, wishing you were somewhere else, we offer you Escape. Escape with us now to Malaya, where a young doctor and a beautiful girl are faced with the horrors of plague and the bloody holocaust of a native revolt, as Charles Israel tells it in Funeral Fires. Burning the dead. The column of flame sucked up against the night sky of the river town, leaned against it, held. And from far away, the dirge, the Malays mourning their dead. Then, drifting down to the landing where I stood, somehow the word, always the word in Malay and Chinese and English, plague. Plague had come to Lapore. Plague. That's why I was here. All the way from Delhi, I'd come. My plague ceremony. The police lieutenant who met me at the rickety little wharf had been there for five days already. He was very young, and he didn't like his job. Ready, awful sell this. Don't you think so, sir? And it's going to get worse. You've brought serum, sir. That should do the trick. It should, but it's not that easy. Every time a native sees a needle, he takes off for the hills, thinks it's something to kill him quicker. Uh, not these natives, sir. There was a plague epidemic here about 15 years ago. Serum wiped it out. The natives call it foreign devil medicine, but they respect it. That's good. It'll save us some time. Oh, there'll be a boy here in a minute for your luggage. Good. I'm glad you've finally arrived, sir. It's good to have a doctor here. Well, they told me there was a doctor here, a Dr. Grimes. Well, it says doctor on his sign, sir. Fine. I need his help. I wouldn't count on it, sir. Why not? You'll see, sir. What are you talking about? Wait till you meet Dr. Grimes. If you want a bit of free advice, sir, I'd rely more on Miss Randall. Miss Randall? Who's she? An American, sir. An American? Well, what's she doing here? I don't know, sir, but she walked in and took over the whole ruddy show. Converted an old warehouse into a hospital. Been slaving day and night. Wonderful, sir. Lieutenant! Someone's calling you, Lieutenant. He'll find me. Who? A compatriot of yours. Oh, there you are, Lieutenant. I've looked all over town for you. Now I'd like to know who's allowed all this. You responsible for this, Lieutenant? Responsible for what, Mr. Ford? For this here funeral business. Every native in Lepore down there by that fire. Is there anything wrong with that, Mr. Ford? I'll tell the world there's something wrong. My whole night shift, every last man, down there singing and carrying on. I'm afraid I can't stop them, Mr. Ford. You'd better stop them, Lieutenant. Get down there and send them back on the job. He can't stop them, Ford. Huh? Who are you? My name is Donovan, Dr. Mark Donovan. So your name is Donovan. So that don't give you a right to... Hey, wait a minute. Holy smoke, man. You're an American. That's right. Well, now, that's different. Shake hands, Doc. Holy smoke. Why didn't you say so? Ford is my moniker. That name is American as the hole in a lifesaver. Oscar R. Ford, Cleveland, Ohio. Ever been to Cleveland, Doc? What are you doing in Lapore, Ford? Rubber. I own a rubber plantation near here. Best little outfit in the whole shebang. And you know why, Doc? Because it's run by an American, that's why. Efficiency. Say, uh, say, Doc, you'll get my men back to work, won't you? I'm here to wipe out plague in Lapore, Ford. Oh, sure, Doc. That's what I mean. Wipe out the plague. We'll show them, Doc. And if you need help, you can count on Oscar R. Ford. Remember that, Doc. Yeah. I'll call you when I need you. Uh, Lieutenant? Uh, yes, sir? I'll be going over to the hospital. Right, sir. Straight down this road, sir. You can't miss it. 
Thanks. I'll let you know when we're ready to set up our serum station. Right you are, sir. I left him standing there with Ford and walked through the town. Everywhere I turned, I brushed against death. It got into my nostrils, crept into the lining of my clothes. The deserted streets shrieked of it. So did a ravaged face seen through the door of a straw hut. Plague. And only the serum I'd brought with me could stop it. I walked into the warehouse that had been converted into a hospital. Rows of people lying on the wooden floor, hundreds of them, the dying and the dead. Then I saw her, the lieutenant's girl, on her knees beside a dying man. She looked up at me. Hand me that cloth, please. Oh, uh, this one? No, not that one. There, in the basin. Bring out the water first. <laughs> Miss Randall? Yes? What do you want? My name is Mark Donovan. I've just come in from Delhi. That's fine. I'm busy. I'm a doctor. Did you bring the serum with you? Yes. Well, get it and get to work. Miss Randall, I'm in charge here now. I'm sorry. It's just that I'm tired. I know. I, uh, I need your help. We're going to set up a serum station. It's about time. When do we start? As soon as we can get organized. Good. Oh, by the way, Miss Randall, is Dr. Grimes around? The rum pot? The, the resident medical officer. Look... If you want to find Grimes, there's only one gin parlor in Lapore. They call it the Nine Dragons. He'll be there. Thanks. Miss Randall? Yes? Get yourself some sleep, huh? Sure, Doctor. As soon as they stop dying. <laughs> You there, boy. You seen Dr. Grimes? Dr. Grimes, sir, you will find him there, sir, at that corner table. Ah, thanks. You're Dr. Grimes? Uh, what if I am? Who wants to know? I'm Dr. Mark Donovan, World Health Organization. I just got in from Delhi. Ah. Hey, well, now, that's a fancy introduction, laddie. That's worth the drink to you. Here, laddie. Go on, drink up. No, thanks. Ah, don't be that way, laddie. Take it. No, thanks. Take the glass, laddie. Take it. We'll have a wee toast. Ha, ah, that'll be the ticket. A ah, wee toast. I said no. Yeah. You didn't have to knock the... Drink from my hand, laddie. Dr. Grimes, how soon can you be ready to give plague injections? Ah, there's no blasted plague here, young man. You're drunk. I say there's no plague here. No plague, you hear? That's what I say and that's what I mean. Come on, Grimes, we'll get some coffee. Ah, you're insolent, young man. I'm in charge here. Let's go, Grimes. Ah, you come to send a bad report on me, have you not? Hey. Well, you'll not do it. I said, come on. Hey, I'm coming, young man. I'm coming. Hey, put that knife away. I'm coming right at you, laddie. I told you to put that knife away. Get up. You, you won't send a, a, a bad report to me now, will you, laddie? Now, you tell me you won't. Get up. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, now, what is it you want from me, lady? Meet me at the hospital in one hour. We're going to begin shooting serum. Uh, yeah, anything you say, lady, and if you please, no bad report. Just be there. Uh, I, I'll be there. I looked back at him. He was standing propped up against the table, staring at me. And he was grinning like a great evil cat grinning. I walked through the swinging doors into the street. Outside was silence. 
The cool silence just before dawn. I stood there, letting it surround me. Don't be rude, Mr. Wu. He stood barring my way. On his shoulder was perched a tiny black monkey. The Chinese leaned his face close to mine. Please to talk with me. And if you are kind, also with Mr. Wu. Uh, another time, huh? I'm in a big hurry. Mr. Wu is my greatest friend, the ruler of King Tosh Pet Shop. I am Kung. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Please. but... No, Dr. Donovan. It is to save your life that I desire to enter into conversation. How do you know my name? I know many things. Please to talk with me. All right. We'll make it quick. To waste time is not Comtesse's wish. To hold time is his greatest ambition. Is it not, Mr. Wu? Go ahead, Mr. Kung. My father was Chinese. My mother, Melee. What the Chinese and love poor choose not to tell, I learn from the family of my mother. Look, Mr. Kung. If you value your life, leave La Poor. Leave at once. What are you talking about? Why should I leave? What a pity, Doctor. Mr. Wu says he's tired. Uh, look, ju just a minute, Mr. Kung. We haven't finished talking yet. Another time, other Doctor. Mr. Wu says he must go now. Say goodbye, Mr. Wu. <laughs> He backed away from me, nodding and bowing, and the monkey on his shoulder doing the same. I turned and started for the hotel. Dawn was coming. The funeral fires were spent, the dirges finished, the melees gone back to their huts to sleep. It was almost daylight when I climbed the stairs and walked down the hall to my room. I've been waiting for you. Where have you been? What are you doing here, Miss Randall? I'm here. That's enough. I asked you why you're here. To help with the serum. You're going to need help, aren't you? Yes. Good. Well, do we get the serum? Remind me to ask you a question, Miss Randall. Like what? Like what brought you to Lepore? I'll remind you. The serum, doctor. All right. Here in this closet. I... Yes? Doctor, what's the matter? Doctor. What? I said, what's the matter with you? The, the, the serum. What about it? It's been stolen. Escape under the direction of Norman MacDonald returns in just a moment. The new CBS comedy star, Frank Fontaine, will pay a visit to CBS's Jack Benny this evening. The young comedian who celebrated for his impression of a sweepstakes winner and for his other impressions will be given a royal welcome, even though Jack believes in buying a sweepstakes ticket only when a single horse is in the race. Mary, Dennis, Don, Phil, and Rochester will be on hand, too. So join the fun that only the Jack Benny Show can bring tonight on CBS. And now, back to Escape. When they sent me from Delhi to Lepore, they said it was plague. And they said it was bad. Now I was here, and it was the way they said it would be. Plague and bad. Only from here on, it was going to be worse, because the serum I'd brought with me was gone. Someone had stolen it from the closet where I'd locked it. Someone who wanted to keep the plague in Lepore. I stood there in my hotel room, staring into the empty closet. How long are you going to stand there, Doctor? I can't believe it. Face it. There's no serum. Well, it was there. I put it there myself, right next to that bromoquinine. Cold tablets won't stop a plague, Doctor. I said I put it there. I heard you, but I don't have to believe you. I don't care what you believe. Maybe you sold the serum before you ever came to Lepore. Maybe you're trying to cover yourself. Sold it? Why would I want to do that? How do I know why you'd sell it? You'd have an angle. All right, you've said what you wanted to say. Get out. All right, I'm going. Wait a minute. I want to ask you a question. And I'll give you an answer. 
The police, Lieutenant. That's where I'm going. How long were you in my room before I got here? I'm going to the police, Doctor. How long were you here? You won't get out of it. How long? I don't know. Fifteen minutes, maybe twenty. Not very long. Long enough to take the serum yourself? Sure. I was here that long. Long enough to hide it and then come back here? You're forgetting something. Like what? I had no reason to take it. You've got a reason. Like what? What are you doing in Lepore? Maybe I write books. Maybe a steel serum. You'd better get that serum back, Doctor. There are people dying. It's your fault. Get it back. Goodbye, Doctor. And I had a couple of things to do. Ask the lieutenant to organize a search patrol. Cable Delhi for more serum. Four days it would take to get here. Four days of raging death. Because I had no serum, people would die before the sun went down. People didn't have to die. And Miss Randall had said it. It was my fault. All right, just a minute. Master, you no move. You listen. Who are you? Number one boy in shop of one Kong Te. Kong Te? Oh, the, the old man with the monkey? That same, Kong Te. All right, you got a message. What is it? Kong Te say, Master, fire, pay $5. Here, message. Here. Now, what's the message? Kong Ti say, he no master have trouble. Kong Ti say, master, come see him chop chop. No cut chop chop, too late. Is that all? Him say, come chop chop. Chop chop, master. Anything was worth a try, I found Kong Ti's pet shop in a narrow, musty street just off the marketplace. It wasn't difficult to pick out because there was a crowd jammed around the door. Holding them back were two melee police. I pushed through the crowd and up to the open door. Oh, good morning, sir. I didn't expect to see you here. What's all this about, Lieutenant? You haven't heard, sir? Heard what? About the unpleasantness. What unpleasantness? What are you trying to tell me? You'd better come inside with me, sir. All right. Oh, what's this unpleasantness you're talking about? Right over there, sir, in the corner. Conte. What happened, Lieutenant? Murder. A large caliber bullet, I'd say. Probably a forty-five. You'll want to examine him, sir? No, oh, that won't be necessary. Quite right, sir. You know, I can't understand it. What? You see, sir, besides yourself, there are only three foreigners in that pool. Miss Randall, Mr. Ford, and Dr. Grant. Well... Well, that's it, sir. Why should one of them want to kill the old man? Uh, How do you know it was one of them? The weapon. Native skill with a knife for a rope. Mostly a rope. Never with a gun. Yes, that's interesting, Lieutenant. And there's something else I don't think natives do. What's that, sir? Steel serum. I meant to ask you about the serum, sir. Miss Randall mentioned it to me. There's going to be trouble, sir. With Miss Randall? With the native, sir. I told you they were waiting for medicine. Somehow it's gotten out of them. They know you don't have the serum. They're right, Lieutenant. It's been stolen. Look, I want all the foreigners in Lepore at your office an hour from now. Can you arrange it? Yes, sir. You think there's some connection? Between the murder and the serum? Maybe. Can you have them there? If you don't mind my saying so, this sounds like a police matter. You're wrong, Lieutenant. It's medical. Strictly medical. I don't understand, sir. You will. Just get those people to your office, hmm? Yes, sir. Miss Randall, Mr. Ford, and Dr. Grimes. You forgot somebody, Lieutenant. Who, sir? You? Me, sir? Quite right. I forgot, sir. I turned and walked out of the shop into the street. I had trouble getting through the crowd. It didn't mean much when somebody poked an elbow in my face. That could have been an accident. But not the man who jumped out in front of me and spat on the ground at my feet. (laughs) This was no accident. This was meant for me. All at once, they were silent, watching me. Then from the hills outside the town, the sound of a drum, slow, ominous. And from somewhere in Lepore itself, the answer, urgent, threatening... 
Finally, I understood. It had gotten out to the natives. Somehow the people had found out that I had lost the serum, and in their minds I was the medicine man who had failed, the man who was making them die. My plan for getting the serum back had to work. I picked up my medical bag from the hotel, hurried to the lieutenant's office, a one-room wooden shack near the edge of town. I had things almost set up when the first person arrived. It was Miss Randall. What's all this about? What are you trying to do? It'll take a little while, Miss Randall. Sit down. I don't want to sit down. She stood and watched me take things out of my bag and place them on the table. The hypodermic syringes, needles, alcohol, and finally the little vial of colorless liquid. Then Dr. Grimes came in, cold sober. He walked across the room, sat down where he could look at me. The natives know something, laddie. Something you didn't want them to know. They are heading this way. Hey. Take your hands off! I had a little trouble with this one, sir. And you're gonna have more, so help me. Sit down, Ford. Why, you little two-bit quack, I... I said sit down! Uh, Well, that's better. Well, Levy, you've got us all here. Now perhaps you'll tell us why. There is an epidemic on. I'm going to inoculate all of you with plague serum. What are you talking about? You haven't got any serum. Just this one vial from my bag, Miss Randall. The rest was stolen. All right, Ford, you first. Roll up your sleeve. Yeah. That's right. Oh. <coughs> it wasn't that bad, Ford. All right, now you, Miss Randall. You're gentle, Doctor. Grimes? Aye, laddie. Get it over with. Yeah. Okay, Doc. Now we've had the shots. How are we going now? Now, just a minute. Nobody leaves here. Oh, what? Good oh, wait a minute. I said nobody leaves here. Lieutenant, stand by the door. Mm, yes, sir. Yeah, what's the big idea? This morning, somebody stole plague serum from my room. I want that serum back. That's your worry, Doctor. Yeah. My worry and yours now. All of you. Because one of you took that serum. You're off your rocker, Doc. Maybe you took it, Ford. You got a rubber plantation. You could shoot your workers full of serum. What would I want to do that for? Oh, efficiency, Ford. The workers on the other plantations would die, and you'd have the field to yourself. Uh, are you, Grimes? You were afraid I'd tell you I had office about you. I know you're wrong, laddie. You've had it pretty good till now, haven't you? No work, plenty of gin. You were afraid I'd spoil it. So you thought you'd make it look bad for me, too. No, no, laddie, you've got it wrong. All right, Doc, you've got us here. Now what are you going to do? <laughs> I've already done it. You've done what? That injection I gave all of you. It wasn't serum. That was plague bacteria. Straight plague. So, uh, what does that mean, Doc? It means I have to get that serum within an hour. Otherwise, every one of you is going to get plague. That's right. You think about it. Plague. Pain a human can't stand. Then when you get used to it, you die. Each one of you. This is ridiculous. You're going to die, all of you, because there's no serum. Serum would save you. Serum I haven't got. Look, doctor. Those sick people at the hospital. They need me. Let me go there. You forget, Miss Randall. You're sick, too. You've got plague. You're going to die. I'm not forgetting. Let me go to the hospital, doctor. Please. What could you do there? Put cold towels on their heads? It doesn't help. It doesn't help much. I know that. They die just the same. But at least they're comfortable. Don't do it, doc. Don't let her go. It ain't right. If she goes, we all go. You keep out of this. Doctor... Please. I can't, Miss Randall. Mr. Ford says it wouldn't be right to let you go. Keep her here, Doc. Here with the rest of us. I told you to keep out of it. What a weasel on me, don't you? You're a fool. Fat and a fool. Yeah. I'd be a fool to let you get out of here. Doctor, 
You'll stay here, Miss Randall. But there's no point in... You heard what the doc says. Stay here. This is your fault, Ford. Cap. It's all your fault. The whole thing... I said shut up! You're going to say something, Miss Randall? I've got nothing to say. All right. We'll wait. We'll wait here as long as... Hey, there's rocks, lady. They're throwing rocks. Ford, what do you want? How do you feel? I... I feel all right. That's funny. You're sweating. But if you say you feel all right, fine. Because in a little while, you won't feel so good. And you won't feel anything. You'll be dead. Have anything to tell me, Ford? All right. We'll wait. Doctor. Uh-huh? I... Nothing. All right. <laughs> You're going to die, Miss Randall. I don't Randall. want to die. Don't let me die. Where's the serum? Make him tell. Make Ford tell where it is. She's crazy. Tell him. Tell him how you paid me to steal it. Don't listen to her. Tell him, Ford, you wanted the serum for your own workers. You killed Kung Tain because he found out. You! Why? <laughs> Don't move, Ford! Keep him covered, Lieutenant. All right, Ford, where's that serum? How do you like that? Trust the day. The serum, Ford, where is it? It's in my house, the living room. Under the floorboard. Get, get a doctor. I don't want to die. Please. Please. Lieutenant, you speak, Millay. Yes, sir. Get out there and tell those people they'll have serum in 30 minutes. Right, there, sir. Pleasure. And take these two with you. Oh. Aye. You're a hard one, laddie. You ready for work, Grimes? Hey, but, but, laddie, you, you'll be taking care of me first, will you not? Oh, you're taken care of, Grimes. Aye, I'm taken care of. You fill me full of plague. Oh, not plague. Water. <laughs> water? Yeah, water. Don't worry, it was distilled. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you Funeral Fires by Charles Israel. Lamont Johnson was starred as Mark, with Georgia Ellis as the girl Alice. Featured in the cast were Don Diamond, Ben Wright, Wilms Herbert, and Leon Lontock. The special music for Escape was composed and conducted by Ivan Dittmars. Next week, Escape with us to the barren wastes of northern Mexico and the story of a million dollars in cash to be had for the asking, if you live. As Anthony Ellis tells it in his exciting story, This Side of Nowhere. Wouldn't you like to help wipe out tuberculosis? Wouldn't you like to help those now afflicted with the dread disease and prevent others from getting it? All the wonderful work carried on by the National Tuberculosis Association is financed by the sale of the Christmas seals you buy each year. So don't forget, help to fight TB by putting a Christmas seal on every letter you write. Escape is one of the fine programs the CBS brings you every Sunday afternoon. On most of these same stations, you can also hear the New York Philharmonic Symphony, the Symphonette, the Arthur Godfrey Digest, the new Meet Frank Sinatra show, Earn Your Vacation, and Make Believe Town. Stay tuned now for Make Believe Town, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. This is Roy Rowan speaking. This is CBS, where you spend an hour with Frank Sinatra every Saturday, Sunday afternoon on the Columbia Broadcasting System.